Welcome back to the City Current Show. I'm your host, Jeremy Park. We're always honored to bring you inspiring stories of individuals and organizations making a difference, empowering the good, and we love talking about education. We're honored to be joined by Dr. Patrick Bentley. He's the headmaster and board member with Chesterton Academy of the Incarnation. And so, how are you doing? I'm great, Jeremy. Thanks. Uh, pretty chilly here today in Middle Tennessee. Uh, school's out, so I'm uh, talking to you from home today. <laughs> hey, the power of technology and, uh, you know, making it happen no matter what. But uh, let's start out with a little bit of history because there's an individual that uh, the school and school system, the network, is named after. So give us a little bit of history. When you talk about Chesterton Academy overall, give us some history and context. Okay. Um, so Chesterton Academy here, Chesterton Academy of the Incarnation in Middle Tennessee is brand new. We, uh, this is, we're in our first year here. It's a high school, co-ed high school. Uh, and our patron is, is G.K. Chesterton. Um, we are a member of the Chesterton Schools Network. Uh, and uh, the founder of the Chesterton Schools Network, uh, a gentleman named Dale Alquist, um, really wanted to highlight G.K. Chesterton. He was an author um, in the uh, early 20th century in England, but he viewed him as a complete thinker, as someone who can uh, can engage with all subjects and topics, all people from all walks of life, and uh, and uh, make connections between them. And um, we we want to try to form young people and students to have a similar um, um, logical, uh, critical thinking uh, process. So that's what, one of the main focuses of what we're doing with our school here is trying to model them in, in, in that way. So the Chesterton Schools Network was founded about 15 years ago. And uh, we are um, being one of the newer schools. There are about 45 schools currently in operation. Next year, there will be about 60 all over the country. Uh, we're the first one in Tennessee. And uh, we're really excited to have uh, to start it up this year. Give us a little bit of the backstory of the local community, the board members and families and such coming together to create and launch the school. So give us a little bit of that storyline in terms of just, you know, pulling all the pieces together to be able to launch. Yep. So uh, my wife and I and two other couples, we've been um, homeschooling our children for years. Um uh, my oldest is 13. I think we've been homeschooling him since he was in first grade. Uh, and the other couples, um, similarly, um, they have some they have some children that they've homeschooled all the way through high school and into college and then some younger children. And as we were doing this together, um, we were really looking for something more for our uh, high school age or approaching high school age students uh, than what we were able to offer them. We were trying to re reinvent the wheel every year. Um, we were trying to find good community for them. Um, we were trying to um, create a curriculum for them that was uh, integrated so that all the subjects kind of speak to each other rather than just are, are studied in silos. And so um, as we were thinking more deeply about how to do this, we came across the Chesterton Schools Network and um, the, they really um, put together a great program to help families and, and, and parents in similar situations to ours to start, start schools. So they don't come in and plant schools. Uh, we approach them and they give some coaching and guidance and, uh, and then, and, and they provide their curriculum and, and, and that sort of thing. And so it really, um, some of the things that are the most, probably the most challenging parts of starting a school, they kind of take off, off your plate. Um, that's not to say there's not still a lot of other things that are very challenging about starting a school. Uh, but it was really, it, it's really helpful to be, um, to be working with them and to know that there's a community of other families around the country doing the same same sort of thing. And so we started uh, uh, in the in this this fall with 13 students in ninth and 10th grade, uh, a number of teachers, and um, and it, it's been going great so far. Awesome. Talk about the six hallmarks. And so when you look at the pillars and you mentioned yep. earlier the some of the things that make you different in terms of everything kind of talking to each other, but talk about the six hallmarks. Yep. So um when we were wanting to found uh, the school or wanting to start something new, like I was, I was mentioning, we, uh, we were really looking kind of for three things. One, we were looking for a classical curriculum. We were looking for affordable, uh, affordable high school education. And then um, we are all Catholic. We we're um, uh, striving to um, uh, found something that's kind of grounded in our Catholic faith. Uh, 
that said, we're 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 happy to to um, serve families and and students of of any faith any faith background. Um, but what really jumped out to us uh, from the Chesterton Schools Network was that whether six hallmarks. Um, and I'll just run through them briefly. The, the incarnational environment is really like putting putting Jesus Christ at the center of everything um, across the whole curriculum. Uh, sometimes in in religiously founded schools, you you see kind of like uh, typical secular education with a little bit of religion on top. And we, what we were trying to do is really thread it thread thread our faith throughout the entire curriculum, and they, they do that really well in the Chesterton Schools Network. Um, the joyful love of learning. One thing I, I love when I see our students is you, you see a lot of laughter and a, and a lot of real joy uh, in learning um, because they're able to, uh, we work with them to go to go deep and to really uh, understand the impact of what they're learning on their on their lives and to see how these things connect across, as, as I mentioned several times, across subjects. So uh, maybe there's a little bit of less of like, what does this have to do with anything? Uh, among the students. And, and it's great to see that. Um, a focus on truth, goodness, and beauty. Um, so we really try to aim all of what we're studying um, on these three things, uh, uh, seeking truth, uh, seeing the good, and seeing the beauty in the world. Um, we uh, um, All the students study philosophy, and so they're getting a real grounding in how to think and um, how to learn how to think and in logic. Um, and then um, they all are all take um, fine arts. So all the students are required to take music and art for all four years and drama for three years um, to really um, give students an appreciation of, of beauty and of creation and of how they can be a creator themselves. Um, Rediscovering the lost tools of learning. So um, reading, um, you know, reading rhetoric and oration. So um, we we spend a lot of time, the students read. Uh, we read the classics, it's, it's classical curriculum, liberal arts education. They're, re, you know, they're reading the Iliad and the Odyssey and and, and some of these classic books and, and, and engaging in great converse, uh, conversation about them. Um, and then, uh, but they're, they're uh, also getting up and, and presenting. And then, like I mentioned, they're all in drama. So getting up in front of people, speaking, um, it's all skills that that uh, we all need, uh, but it's 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 really um, a me methodology of learning um, that I think in a lot a lot of cases has been lost today. Um, and the Socratic seminar. Um, so most of our classes they sit around a table and they speak to each other. It's not sitting in rows of desks with a teacher speaking at them, uh, but they're really conversing about the topics at hand uh, and about the material. Obviously, some classes are a little less. Um, conducive to that, uh, but but are done that way in as much as possible. Um, this really allows students to come out of their shells. Um, it 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 um, prevents to some degree students from being able to hide in the back of the classroom uh, uh, with their head down uh, because they're they're all there, they're all speaking to each other. But also present uh, it also promotes a, a sense of respectful conversation. And it's something that we've really lost, I think, in, in our society today to be able to present views and disagree. And even argue a little bit um, in a respectful way, um, uh, and 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 still walk away friends. Um, and that's one of the things that G.K. Chesterton talked about a lot. Some of his closest friends were his uh, biggest uh, ideological enemies, or so to speak, or ideologically uh, opposite of him. Um, and then the wit and wisdom of G.K. Chesterton. Um, not only he was a brilliant, he was a brilliant man, brilliant uh, writer. He was he was he was very very funny. Um, and so a lot of his work is threaded throughout, uh, throughout our curriculum. You've kind of alluded to it throughout as you were explaining the, you know, the, the six different areas of focus. And when you talk about the six hallmarks and how that applies in a larger scope for education, because as you mentioned, there's one thing of sitting down and, and learning from a book and, you know, memorizing, so to speak, to be able to get a good grade on a test. There's another to be able to learn how to be curious, learn how to solve problems, learn how to get up in front of people and be able to be a storyteller and, and share and engage. And to your point, too, about, you know, discourse and sitting down with those who ideologically differ from you and having a civil conversation and learning from each other. So those are things I think that as you grow older, 
those are going to lead to true success because you become curious, you become a learner. And so talk about just what this means for, you know, as the high school students go to college and become leaders, what you're really preparing for them as a foundation for success with this type of education. Yeah. Our, our, our great hope is that um, they'll be able to go on from here and, and serve their community and serve our country, serve the world um, in, in a very productive way um, um, by trying to form the whole person, right? We're not trying to exclude any, any aspect of them. So we have, you know, kind of the intellectual formation uh, aspect, which is, a, which is our curriculum in the classes. Um, we have a character, character formation aspect, which we have a, um, a house system. So each of the students are, are distributed into houses. Um, and so there's some leadership opportunities and mentorship opportunities, kind of peer mentorship opportunities there. Um, and then, uh, and then spiritual formation. So we, we, we come together to worship every day, uh, at, at mass, uh, and a number of other retreats and that sort of thing throughout the year. And so we're hoping, uh, our, our great hope is that by forming the whole person in all of these aspects and not kind of excluding them, um, they'll be able to go on um after after high school um to really uh be able to engage the world in a way that I think a lot of uh, young people are are uh, unable to do today um because of because um either their their school is very focused on academics and and neglects uh, other, other other areas or um just I think the way society you know a lot of a lot of things in society are are um especially things like social media and that, and that sort of thing are really um, focusing the students on themselves rather than focusing them outwards on, onto the, onto the world. Talk about vision plans for the future. You mentioned kind of where you are in this moment, but talk about plans for the future ahead. Yeah. So um, our plan is to grow. So currently we have a ninth and 10th grade. Our plan is to grow into a full high school over the next two years. Um we have a number of applications already coming in for for this year, uh, to, and we're growing our school uh, with that. We also are having to grow our teacher base, um, and I'm excited to say it was never the the plan for me to be uh, a long term headmaster. Uh, and we've hired a uh, headmaster that will start for for next school year, and we're really like, really excited for him to join us uh, in the summer. He's already working really hard on uh, on plans for next year. Um, and so the hope is over over time, um, you know, some of the other schools in the Chesterton network have grown to 160, 180 students. And, um, you know, we're hoping hoping the, the, that we'll follow a similar tra trajectory because we think we really have a lot to offer. And uh, this is a great, unique, um, unique offering that, that doesn't really exist in Middle Tennessee today. Um, so next year, um, we're... Uh, yeah, next year we'll grow into a, a ninth, tenth, and eleventh grade. Applications are open, so anyone who's interested in applying, please see our website uh, and, uh, and and or, or reach out to us for information. Um, and uh, and we're going to go from there. This year we we haven't offered any sports, but we're hoping next year to be able to offer soccer uh, and field a soccer team um, and uh, and maybe a basketball team. Um, and so just trying to trying to build up the community and build up. Uh, um, some other extracurricular activities uh, for the students to get involved in that they would experience at other schools too, um, so that they uh, can can come experience our our uh, our high school as well. Absolutely, talk about events opportunities for the public to come out and see you in action. So you've got an open house, you've got all sorts of opportunities to engage the community. So how can we engage? How can we help? Okay. Uh, so uh, later at the end of February, we'll be having another open house. Um, it'll be at our location, which currently is um, at um, Holy Cross Anglican Church, which is on uh, Murfreesboro Road. And uh, we'll have some teachers there and some students there to, 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 tell, to tell you about our, our program. And then um, our annual fundraising event, uh, our annual Chesterton Gala, will be on May 20th at um, NBC Suites in Cool Springs. And uh, there's information on our website about that. We would love to have everyone come out to hear more about what we're doing, hear more about our plans and, and, and what we have to offer the community. Go ahead and wrap up with website, contact information. Where do we go to reach out to learn more and get involved? Okay. Our website is chestertontn.com. Um, 
You can go there to find all the information about uh, applications, about the gala, uh, and about our, our educational philosophy mission and that sort of thing. Uh, we're also on Facebook and Instagram. Um, you can find us there and post, uh, post um, you know, exciting things about what our students are doing or uh, information about different events and things we have going on. Um, our, uh, if you would like to reach out, uh, info at chestertontn.com uh, is, is our, um, our information um, uh, email address, and we'll happy to, be happy to talk to you there. Absolutely. The website again is chestertontn.com. So chestertontn.com. Dr. Patrick Bentley, thank you for all you and your amazing team do. Thank you for coming on the show. Thanks, Jeremy. I appreciate you taking the time.